My name is Jane Wallace and I co-chair the IMT Advisory Committee and I'm going to talk through this presentation, Sexual Harassment, a Guide for Trainees in Medicine. It's been produced by JRCPTB and the Trainee Committees of RCP Edinburgh, Glasgow and London. The three Royal Colleges of the Physicians of the UK and JRCPTB are strongly against any form of sexual harassment in the workplace. And this presentation has been written in response to issues raised in surgery by the JRCPTB and the trainee committees of all three colleges. We take the issue of sexual harassment with the utmost gravity and all agree that it's intolerable and must be tackled. There's some background information on this side and some links with further information. So in the GMC statement from Good Medical Practice, it says you must not act in a sexual way towards colleagues with the effect or purpose of causing offence, embarrassment, humiliation or distress. Behaviours that are considered harassment include sexual comments, even if they're passed off as jokes or banter. Sexual references that make you feel embarrassed, displaying or sending sexual content or un any unwelcome sexual advances. It constitutes harassment if it violates your dignity, if it makes you feel humiliated, degraded or intimidated, or if it creates a hostile or offensive environment for you to work in. It's sexual assault if there's coercion or force into an unwanted sexual act or touching another person sexually without their consent. So what should you do if you're a victim of sexual harassment in the workplace? Firstly, you may or may not feel comfortable speaking up and that is a personal decision when you're in that situation. Secondly, we would really encourage you to make specific notes of exactly what has happened with as much detail as you can remember and very helpful to record if there are any witnesses there or indeed anyone else said anything on your behalf we would strongly encourage you to report it. I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about the reporting mechanisms, but that could be within the training structure or within the hospital management structure. And there may be, there may be occasions when it's appropriate to escalate, and that could be to the local police or sometimes the public. So let's talk a little bit about how you can escalate it too. Firstly, within the training programme, you have your educational or clinical supervisor or indeed any consultant that you feel comfortable raising the issue with. You may have trust tutors or the equivalent. There's also your training programme directors, the associate postgraduate dean or indeed the dean and deputy head of school and head of school. These are all mechanisms within the training structure that can provide you with support. You may want to escalate it it with your employers, so that may be your line manager within your trust, there may be a freedom to speak up guardian within the trust, it may be the departmental head or someone within the HR department, or your director of medical education. So again, lots of lines of escalating it with your employer or your trust. And the medical director or chief executive would also be included in that. Then within the college, you have your individual training committees, you could escalate it to them, or indeed you could take it to the JRCPTB. So a whole range of different ways of escalating your concerns. So a few really important points to remember. It is against the law to be victimised because you've made a complaint. An unfavourable treatment of the victim after reacting for, to events constitutes as harassment and is illegal. So we would strongly, strongly encourage you to escalate any concerns and not to worry about any untoward consequences of that because they should not happen and they will be tackled if they do happen. And it's also really important to remember that behaviour can be unwanted even if you didn't ask it to stop. So the emphasis is not on you to speak up at that moment if you do not feel comfortable doing so. And just to mention that bullying and undermining um, are under separate policies. And again, just reiterate how to raise concerns and to do it internally through any of those structures I've covered so that they can be properly investigated. So 
lots of support works and some of these will be obvious to you like your friends your family and colleagues but there's also a whole range of more formal support associations that can help you and I've listed them there and there's links to all of them so that's the end of the presentation and I hope it's been helpful